Bill, the refrigerator, it's not cold. Again? It's been hot, but it's not as hot as it was last week. I think there's something really wrong this time. There was something very wrong. After running all the tests that are suggested on YouTube and in different forums, this is what greeted me on the back of the refrigerator. This is the overheat safety switch telling me that there is something very wrong. My next trip up to the roof vent gave me a whiff of ammonia and the smell of wood burning. At that point, we evacuated the coach and I pulled all the power to the refrigerator. I hosed down the back side of the refrigerator and the woodwork around it. When it cooled down, I saw yellow water from the hose down, indicating a serious ammonia leak. I pulled the insulation from around the heaters and found this when I sprayed soapy water on it. The cooling unit was dead, leaking ammonia and flammable gases. After Sherry and I discussed the situation, we decided to replace it with a domestic type refrigerator. So after a friend helped me remove the dead nor cold unit, I went to work making the space more friendly for a deeper refrigerator. I removed the small cabinets above the refrigerator. I sealed off and insulated the roof vent. I insulated the access door on the bottom outside. The door below the opening is the circuit breaker panels. And as I didn't want to move those, the new refrigerator is a little tall. I also relocated the AC power plug so I could access it from outside. The next issue we had was what to get. We knew we needed a domestic type refrigerator, but what would fit and how to get it into the coach. Both Home Depot and Lowe's had refrigerators available, but we had to know what would fit through the window without having to remove the window frame. Lowe's had one in stock in black that was 18 cubic feet and with the doors removed would fit through the window without removing the window frame. When I asked them if they would install it when it was delivered, they just looked at me funny. They even offered beer. Knowing we would be installing it, I asked okay. friends for some help. Once it was in place, I secured it to the two pieces of angle steel I mounted to the front of the cabinet with quarter inch bolts. The back is screwed to the floor of the cabinet using some L brackets and sheet metal screws. The L brackets I happen to have left over from another project. And as a bonus, the ice maker kit I had used for the Norcold refrigerator is the same one for the frigid air. And so that went into it as well. Being able to reach the power plug from outside helps a lot with the maintenance of 
the refrigerator. Admittedly, the refrigerator sticks out more than the original and is about three inches taller, but it still looks good in place. In a future video, we will detail how we do the cabinetry to finish it, as well as securing the top and the doors for travel. Our deepest thanks to those who helped us in this project. Hi, thanks for watching our channel. Please, if you have any suggestions for any videos you'd like us to do, especially maybe RV repair or some type of dog grooming, please leave them in the comments below.